Hello and welcome to Chawton House. My name is Katie Charles and I'm the Chief Executive here. And of course, on the second Saturday in July, ordinarily, we'd be looking forward to welcoming the Jane Austen Society to Chawton House, to the marquee on the South Lawn for us all to, to get together once a year. Now, 2020 has, has turned out a little bit differently to how we all thought it might. Um, and so, although we can't um, welcome you here in person, we're delighted that we're working with the Jane Austen Society to host this afternoon of talks and, and discussions and of course the updates um, from the village of Chawton too. So I hope next year um, that we're able to reconvene back at Chawton, but wherever you are in, in the UK, wherever you are in the world, um, I hope you've got yourself a, a kind of comfy chair and a cup of tea um, in your garden or your sitting room and you can enjoy what we what we can show you from Chawton House today. Now, um, this update is going to be obviously a little bit different to the one that I would have thought I would have given you um, 12 months on from that first time uh, that I met you all last summer. But we have just reopened the gardens and the tea room um, at Chawton House on the, on the 4th of July. Um, and that's part of the, of the slow phased reopening um, of the whole of the house, the gardens and the parkland um, at Chawton. So I hope we're able to welcome some people back, um, some of you back here um, very soon. Now, the last few months have been obviously um, difficult for all of us. We closed our, our gates to the public uh, on the 24th of March. Um, and immediately we thought that, you know, this wasn't going to be a quick crisis. It wasn't something that we were going to be able to bounce back from. Uh, so we put in place a whole new plan um, and decided that whilst we were closed to the public, um, that we weren't going to be, um, we weren't going to stop doing what it is that we that we do. Tell the story of this wonderful house, uh, the Knight family of Jane Austen and the association with the estate, and of course, um, tell the stories from our wonderful collection of early women writers. We turned a lot of what we do um, and thought about how we turn a lot of what we do online. Um, and so for the three months of lockdown, um, we had a really uh, detailed, uh, really varied program um, of digital uh, programs and online events. Um, I hope you could follow on uh, social media with our uh, Rainbows of Hope, where we work with lots of other East Hampshire heritage organisations to bring you little snippets of history and little scenes from the house um, every single day. And we started that in the first week of lockdown. We held a poetry challenge in May, um, inspired by the women who are in our women poets who are in our collection, um, and allowed people to reflect on some of the um, the sort of difficult times that we that we are living in. We knew people would be um, would be at home, and so we wanted to provide that entertainment and that escapism for some people, um, or just that sense of community that I know we all feel um, and definitely feel within the Jane Austen Society. Um, even though we were all at home, um, some people um, quite isolated away from, from where they would normally be. So along with those two events, we relaunched The Female Spectator, um, which I know many of you used to enjoy reading. It's now a digital publication and you can get that from our online shop. And we launched an online shop. Um, we were able to move um, most of what we're able to sell um, on site online and we ship that worldwide so if there's something that you're that you've seen and you're inspired and um, to buy it's a it's a wonderful way um, of supporting Chawton House and um, we delivered 400 afternoon tea boxes to uh, addresses across East Hampshire and um, celebrating Easter Mother's Day Father's Day BE Day Bank Holiday um, and also providing a way of being able to have your own Chawton House garden party whilst we did our online garden festival. And um, that was one of two events that we did uh, online precursors to, to this afternoon, of course. Um, we did the garden festival, as I said, at the end of May. Um, but for three days in May, we held the Lockdown Literary Festival, which was 31 different events, uh, workshops, mass poetry writing, Q&A, live interviews um, and readings. Um, and I'm really grateful for all the people um, who took part in that, um, who gave freely of their time. Um, I'm very grateful for everybody who bought a virtual ticket and made a donation um, to help us to get through that difficult period um, whilst we were closed. 
it's a shame for, for everybody, of course, that, that Chilton House um, had to close along with everybody else on, at the end of March because we've been really busy over the winter. Um, we'd spent um, time representing um, the whole house to visitors. Um, you'll notice just behind me is one of our new uh, interpretation boards. And whilst we were, uh, whilst we were closed um, for our winter closure, our normal winter closure, um, we moved every piece of furniture um, around Chawton House. We moved all the paintings apart from four. Um, Edward Austin Knight's portrait, generously on loan to us from, from the Society of course, has remained in its, in its place in the dining room and, and has been central to how we've retold the story for visitors around the house. Um, so we now start by telling the Knights, uh, the, the history of the Knight family downstairs and then um, how, how Jane Austen would have been familiar and inspired by this, um, by this house and this estate. Um, you then walk through our special exhibition space, which is now um, a wonderful, extraordinary exhibition. Everything I really hoped that we would do with special exhibitions um, at Chawton House. Uh, it's called Man Up, Women Who Stepped Into a Man's World. Um, and although we hope to, to reopen that and, and uh, within it we've got remarkable loans from the Bronte Society, the National Aerospace Library, Hampshire Records Office and Hampshire Cultural Trust, we've also been able to get out um, and display some of um, some works that I don't think have ever really been displayed um, from our collection. Um, and it all centres and starts around um, a story that only Chawton House could tell um, which is of the remarkable Elizabeth Knight, um, probably the only female squire, if you like, um, of Chawton House, um, and she is featured in that exhibition. Um, if I've tempted you with that exhibition, that's another thing that we moved online. Um, the exhibition has moved online along with a curatorial talk from its curator, um, Cleo O'Sullivan, and um, that's part of a six-part podcast series um, that we've just launched and um, put together um, for us by uh, Lizzie Frisby, who whilst also being an independent uh, radio producer, um, also works at Chawton House. Um, so we're a really very talented team here and everyone has pitched in uh, over the course of the last 12 months. Um, so I do hope you can, you can listen to, uh, to the podcast series um, after this afternoon and, and maybe plan your next, your next trip back to Chawton House. We um, are continuing this online and uh, events um, throughout the course of the summer and into, and into the autumn. And uh, we probably will continue this um, for, for a really long time. Um, it's been a wonderful way of us being able to um, connect to and, and involve audiences and visitors who are for whatever reason unable to cross our threshold. Of course, between March and June, nobody could cross our threshold, um, but it's taught us um, uh, how we can provide really interesting online content. Uh, so we're continuing that through the summer with the Chawton House Summer Series, which is a, a series of lectures. Um, and our next lecture at the end, um, and talk at the end of Ju uh, July, um, is with Janice Hadlow, the author of The Other Bennett Sister. And there are more coming in August as well. With everything that we're doing at Chawton House, whether it is those talks or the, the plant fair next weekend, um, the best way to find out what we're doing is to sign up to our newsletter um, and that's how, we, uh, you, how you'll find out first what we're doing at Chawton House. We, it's very important to us that we maintain um, the research um, and the academic heart of what we do with the collection at Chawton House. Um, so we, uh, although we haven't been able to, for obvious reasons, host as many researchers this year as we would normally do, um, we hosted 40 researchers last year and we're looking forward to, to building that programme um, back up uh, into 2021. And we've got two new members of staff, I think, uh, at least since she last came to Chawton last summer. Um, we have a, a wonderful new gardener, uh, Julia Weaver, and Julia has started this programme of developing and uh, refreshing the gardens at Chawton. They look absolutely beautiful and it's so nice to be able to finally share them with visitors. Uh, the novelty of having them to ourselves did wear off after a couple of days of lockdown so it's lovely that people are coming to see the wall garden and, and walk through uh, the wilderness and picnic on the south lawn for the, um, for the first time this summer. And we have a new curator 
uh, Curator and Collections Manager Emma Yandel and she jo joined us um, just before Christmas um, and it was really Emma and Louisa Carpenter um, along with some of our volunteers including Martin Caddick who's writing, uh, writing for us um, the most amazing history of Chawton House um, who were the, um, the, the brains and also um, the muscle behind this uh, wonderful representation um, of Chawton House. Part of that representation is of uh, new galleries uh, to do with women writers um, and where we have arranged a wonderful collection of portraits we have of women writers and I think Louisa and Cleo um, as part of this afternoon's programmes will be showing you a few more details of what we've done with those galleries. Now you know that this uh, Chawton House is no stranger to a crisis in the last few years and, and maybe it is the fact that, um, that we know what to do when things and do get a little bit difficult that we have been able to um, work our way through the lockdown by having this big this big program and, and keeping our kitchens open for the afternoon tea boxes. Uh, the old kitchen tea room is one of the real stars and one of the real um, success stories of Chawton House um, becoming such a popular destination uh, in itself. We're really glad now that, um, that others, more than just us, are enjoying uh, Enya's cooking. Um, for this, um, for the first time this season. However, in reopening the house, um, we know that we're not going to be able to welcome the same number of visitors um, that we had last year. We have to um, have a booking system and we have to have a certain number of people on site. It's very important that we recognise social distancing and, um, and, and keep a one-way system, which means that Although we welcomed 20,000 visitors for the first time last year, it's unlikely, obviously, that we'll have 20,000 visitors this year. We can't do big events um, because we're not allowed to, to hold mass gatherings inside or outside. Um, whilst I speak to you, we can't do outdoor performance and we can't do tours inside. We can't do anything where we project our voice um, or we have people in close proximity. And of course, weddings and private hire um, are not possible and these had all become, as we'd had this really successful year in 2019, we completely turned around um, the, the kind of finances of Chawton House. Um, those have become staples um, of that business. So to, in order to adjust to this new uh, way of working and as, we're, as we build up those other alternative income streams that we are, um, that, that we are doing now, um, we have an emergency appeal open. Um, and that appeal is, is to help us to be able to pay uh, essential bills and essential maintenance, and, uh, but also to, to pay for that transformation um, from how we operated and how we thought we were going to operate in 2020 to how we will operate for the remainder of this year and into, and into next year as well. Um, and we've all been made up, completely made up, um, by the number of people uh, who, whilst we were closed, missed Chawton House um, and really wanted us to survive that difficult period and donated to us. It's been a complete lifeline. It's been the reason we've been able to reopen. Um, it's been the reason we were able to do that really big programme of uh, online activity. Um, and it's the reason that we can plan now um, for the rest of the year. Um, it's, we still uh, obviously are always grateful for donations through the emergency appeal and you'll find all the details of that uh, on our website. Now I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon um, I hope you are going to enjoy seeing Chawton virtually rather than being able to come and walk around the gardens um, and have your cup of tea in the tea room um, with, with everybody together, um, but hopefully this replaces a little bit of that. If you do want to see more of the gardens at Chawton and you can't, you're not able to come here, there are two wonderful garden tours um, through the Virtual Garden Festival and one of those is a Jane Austen themed uh, garden tour. So you can, you can sit back and pretend you're sat in the wall garden, um, maybe. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon and I hope we can see you at Chawton House very soon. Hello, I'm Lizzie Dunford and I'm the new director of Jane Austen's House. It's a real pleasure to be able to speak to you today and take part in this special event, even if it is in a way we couldn't possibly have imagined even six months ago. It's also really special and a real privilege to be able to speak directly to you, the Jane Austen Society members. You are so vital to the history of the house, constantly, 
throughout its past, its present and its future. We've been very busy during lockdown at the house, even with our doors closed and not able to welcome visitors. One of the things we've been doing is working through the attic and working through our archives. And we have found this, which is original manuscript of the report of the Society from September the 14th, 1946. Now it's a long scroll and needs to be unrolled quite carefully. But what it says is this. First report of the Society to be issued since the war has much to tell its members. With the return of the owners from active service, it has been possible to enter on negotiation for the purchase of Jane Austen's house. The owner has agreed to a price of £3,000. An architect's report commissioned by the Society confirms that extensive repairs are urgently necessary. The Society has therefore set itself the object of raising at least £5,000 for the purposes of buying and repairing the house. Over 70 years later, we once again found ourselves in the position of fundraising to ensure the future of Jane Austen's house and its ability to be accessible by the public. Now we know we're not alone in this. We're not alone in having an incredibly challenging few months as we've seen a complete loss of income and the closure of the doors. But we have been incredibly lucky to have your support to have the support of Jane Austen Society members and Janeites from across the globe, from Beijing to Mexico, who have all rallied together to help us. I would like to thank you, each and every donor, for your contributions. And I know there have been very, very many Jane Austen Society members who've contributed towards our appeal. You didn't just give us money, you gave us hope at a time when things were looking very bleak indeed. And for that, we will be eternally grateful. We are now looking ahead to the future. It's a future that won't be without its worries or difficulties, or indeed, to use that word again, challenges. But it is a future in which we can welcome you back to Jane Austen's house, to follow in Jane's footsteps, to tread the floorboards that she did, and to wander from room to room, as she would have done when she was composing the glorious novels and letters and all of those words that have brought us all here today. Now we're not quite ready to announce an opening date yet, but when we do, we will make sure that Jane Austen Society members are among the first to know. We do know that we'll only be able to open four days a week and that everybody who comes to visit will have to book in advance. We will also be significantly limiting the number of visitors that we have on site. And whilst that raises challenges for us with meeting our costs, it does mean that for you as visitors, you'll have a far more intimate experience of the house with far few people there. You'll be able to have it almost to yourself, which I think will be a real treat. There will also be new things to see and new ways to explore the house. The last 12 months have seen some wonderful new acquisitions to our collection, including the portrait miniatures of Mary Pearson and the Digweed family. We also have a new website launched in April, which I hope you've already had a chance to explore, which we'll be adding more and more things to as time progresses, really increasing our resources and the information that we have on there about Jane Austen and her life. One of the key things we're looking forward to developing with this is a virtual tour, which we're starting to work on at the moment and hope to have ready within a few months. It's been a year of extraordinary change for Jane Austen's house, possibly one of the most tumultuous yet in our nearly 71 year history of being open to the public. But the Jane Austen Society has been a constant source of support and energy throughout every single one of those seven decades. We at Jane Austen's house wish you a very, very happy 80th birthday. And whilst we can't all be together in person today to share cake and tea, we look forward to many, many more years of celebrating and sharing the joy that is Jane Austen together. Thank you again for all that you do and all that you are. Mm -hmm.